Hello again and welcome to my channel. I've been doing some more reading and I found some more writing that I've done. And for those of you that have just found my channel now, I channel spirit but I go from demon realm up to spirit guides. Um, I've been watching some other YouTubers and uh, one of the ladies I've just um, been listening to channels angels. So it's quite a... I don't, I don't know what... If, if, if somebody says I channel angels, they're more likely to get a, oh, that's good. But if somebody says I go to the lower realms, it's more, mm, I would stay away from that. But I believe personally that we are all interconnected and there is a need for everything and that's the light and the dark so I don't walk away from the darkness I embrace it and I look at it properly and analyze it and see it for what it is so I've got um, some writing here that I've just done this is called um, can we topple the cabal now it, I'm using the word cabal as a loose term because some people use other words like illuminati or the archons um but you know what i mean when i say the rulers the, the ones who were in charge of this plane uh, christians would say it's the demons because they were cast out of heaven so it, it's those negative ones that are taking control of the earth so th that's who i'm referring to so when I do the channeling, I read it through a QWERTY keyboard and I also do pendulum using a chat. And I write down what I channel so I can reference it and keep notes because I think it's important to remember what you've done and um, just keep a log of everything. So I'm going to read out what I've wrote about this one and this was hillmon the spirit guide who told me this so it depends what frequency i'm on that i it depends so who i get through to so this is what they said so i said can we topple the cabal and they said okay listen to this instead of asking killing questions rile wendy house storm up and that means think about the question you are asking so you can see there that the language that they use is not my kind of language and it doesn't even make sense but then it does if they explain it so so they said you think you are going to get the nominal plus answer but it is so much more intricate than you think you already know they are falling they cannot cope they cannot cope when the population is positive they only cope with one and sickly life. The more they try, the more the people wake up. You've got to know this is the final chapter on this plane. There's a slow sand egg timer that works in the opposite direction to your time on this plane. The wheels are already in motion to gold finger the plane of dearly beloved people. As Gorgonzola is the god of cheese, so is Gondola to your golden palace. This makes no sense to you yet. Bin Laden the world and we stay in the spacecrafts. And we watch you implode until you explode. Only then will we act on the panting dog's slaver. There's a lot of people in this on this plane we do not like. It's no volcano that will erupt. It's your minds. They cannot comprehend why you are here and why you stay in such a low density plane. This is not your home. It's a play school for the spiritual realms. The playground is filled with students who chose to come here. They all wanted to play the game of life. They were flowering and blooming in the world of spirit. Then they insisted on having a human experience. You are so trapped in your heads and Dalton Abbey life 
that you forget that you came here to slowly Uber ride to the next place in time. This is where the spirit in you rises and fandangles the life force within you. The way that you hold your soul is important because you should cherish the soul's essence because the slow cooker is filled with your souls that the cabal has taken. You think it's too late to save yourselves, but it is not at all. In lighthouse in your head lies the higher truth. The panda eyes are there to frighten you all. The Pandora's box is opening to reveal the truth about who you are. Not there, somewhere else. Sorry, um, the cabal of pa are pathetically weak when they are not given the audience they seek. Without your input, they slowly fade away. Non-compliance is the answer to your question. Simple playground stuff. You will not comply, nor will millions of others. And this makes you stand out from the crowd. Your inability to conform comes from you knowing the truth. You will be saved from the fated storm that you refuse to play with. You will succeed this time in elevating your soul to a bolder place than your earth. You're going to play the game of love thy neighbour a little longer. Then we are taking you and the others home, where we will celebrate and dance again and rejoice in your achievement to plant the seeds of longing in the hearts of others. You will be missed, not long now until you will be home. We have gotten you all in our ears and in our heart chakras. The life was not what you expected it, was it? It was filled only with your thoughts and emotions, mostly unhappy, but inside you knew that the way to the end of times lies in your heart. The yolla, the screaming, the laughter, the tears of joy and sorrow are about to fade away until the time we are all one again. Let go of the sadness and pain and feel the joy. And that's what I got this time. So, do you know what's really interesting is even when I'm talking to a so-called demon, he still talks the same way the angels talk to people. So, and it's usually really positive. Um, I don't know if I've done the story of Hillman. I'm, I'm going to actually do a, a story just about his life because I think if, if Hillman is a disembodied soul that once was a man, which he claims he was, then I want to tell his story because he says that his story is similar to ours down here and that he came from a place that went through the same things as us. And I'm going to, I, I'm going to do a story just on him one time. But this is really interesting because I only learned how to start channeling a, a few years ago. and it's it's become something that I feel really, it, well, I don't know what words to use, it's quite passionate about, I suppose, because it, it takes a lot of time and effort to learn this and to write all these things down. But I love the fact that it's tallying a lot with what other people are saying as well. And that's why I like it, because it's like we all tuned in and we just all know the truth. And deep down, we just need other people to clarify that we're right. Sometimes we do get scared. And I used to get scared a lot when I was younger, a lot more than now, because I was driven by fear and I believed everything I was told to some degree, including the conspiracy world. And that in itself can be very negative and destructive to people because there are different types of awakenings, you know, the, the first one is the seed that is planted in your mind about something being wrong. And for me, it was many years ago when I was 40, um, I was told about the chemtrails and I had no idea. And, I'm, and I thought, I don't even know what you're talking about. But I went to research to prove him wrong. 
and I couldn't because I did so much research it came that it, it was actually right and I was really shocked and then I went through a, a phase of being really angry and I, I just couldn't believe how how terrible that the plan was for us and what they were doing to us and I thought how can anybody be this evil and how could they be so cruel how could you and I couldn't get my head around that level of evilness because when when you start on one subject and and you get into it it leads you down the rabbit hole and you end up somewhere else and it just goes on and on and on until you just implode and I remember going through a place of thinking I'm going to crack up with this and I had to pull back from it because the deeper you go the worse it gets and you think this depravity is out of my comprehension I, I just can't get my head around anybody being this depraved it was just awful and this is what a lot of people go through where it, it's all these different phases and then of course you go to the place of acceptance uh, of the world is not what you thought but what do we do with it and then you start looking at around um but i remember being quite feverish at some point and, and it kept going on about things all the time and i got called um, a crazy conspiracy theorist which is the terms people like to use a lot but as time goes on you get to a point where you think right not everything i'm getting told here is the actual truth because um, I mean, I remember when they said that this, these events were going to happen. There's been quite a few events that were supposed to have happened, but never did. And at the moment, the the latest things that I'm getting told is the crash of the economy, and now money is going to be taken away, and we won't have cash. And you can go through phases of panicking, thinking, "Oh my gosh, this is going to be shocking," and 15 minute cities and 5g and all the rest of it and you're thinking oh we've got no chance but i've got to put this out there and say this i know and, and i've downloaded this um during some of my writings as well that this is the way of the world it's a plane where anything goes it's a playground where you can be anything you want you can be good, you can be bad, you can be indifferent. It's up to you. And this game is how you want to play it. And what we sometimes lose track of, especially when you start going into the darker side of the world, is you start to think that everybody is evil, like every doctor is evil and every policeman is corrupt and every politician is a liar and blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> And what we've got to remember and you've got to pull yourself back on is there are good and bad in everything and if you're losing hope and you're thinking oh we're going to get taken down just remember this what started off as agenda 21 came and went they were supposed to have had a plan in action that was to be carried out by 2021 and everything should have been in place but it didn't happen, so they had to extend it to 2130. And now I've just been uh, reading about um, the latest plan, um, which is 2025 to 2045. And, it, and, and I'm thinking, are we getting a lot of this information put out there to keep us in fear? So we've got this time ticking in our heads of, oh, the, the world we're running out of time and this is going to happen and these terrible things are going to befall us and how will we cope but you've got to remember <clears throat> when I, I come from a generation where we didn't have the internet and we didn't have this communication that we have now and so our knowledge of the world was very limited and i lived in a, a small place in a valley with people who, who were multi-generational families and we only progressed to a certain level and to us that was the old world there when the internet came about we all started to see 
the world in a bigger way. It's like, wow, there's, there's people in America. I can talk to people in America at the touch of a button and I can have conversations with them. And then you start watching all these things on like platforms like YouTube. And some people put out there all this negativity and all this sadness and all this fear mongering. And it's so easy to get caught up in it. And you've got to remember that people like the, the media itself does manipulate people and control them by choosing the narrative. So if they decide that one country is out, is going to be perceived as the enemy, then they will do scenes and newsreels that are lying about that. <clears throat> and there's been so many times I've watched the news and I've ended up being so depressed that I just quit watching the TV about 14 years ago because it was just too depressing. And I thought, I, I can't take no more of this. It was just fear mongering from minute to, it was just awful. <clears throat> what we're not getting told is the truth, not uh, by the media. But what's really interesting and what I was thinking about is this. <clears throat> Sorry, there's so much going on in the world and we're getting told sad stories and bad stories and this is going to happen and that's going to happen and be beware, be careful. It's a scary world out there. <clears throat> and if you've got mental health problems or you've got fear of being alone and, and you think these bad things are going to happen to you all the time, then we can actually make them happen. And when I was making the point earlier of saying that there are people out there who are not all bad in every single industry, in every single religion and everything else, there's always somebody good there. And it's been, I would say, the last sort of 10 years for me personally, the amount of revelations that have come out of people and we don't know if they're all true. We don't know if they're lying or telling the truth. But there are whistleblowers. And the whistleblowers are the people who are working in these industries that are trying to take us down. And these people are blowing the whistle, if you like, on what's going on there. And so <clears throat> we are living in the book of Revelations, which is the revealing of the lies. And... Uh, I'm not going to get into a biblical thing, but <clears throat> we are being told so many lies. And we have now getting told the truth about a lot of things as well. And the truth shall set you free. Because when when you become aware of what's going on, and I'm going to use an example of, say, like doctors. <clears throat> I come from a generation that trusted doctors. And, and we trusted them to such a degree, we didn't even question anything they said. We just did what they told us. So if they said, you've got this illness, here's the pills, take them. You just did that. There was no question of should I or shouldn't I. But now with the whistleblowers coming out and and even doctors themselves coming out and saying, look, we're, we're practicing allergistic medicine here. and." you are holistic and allergistic medicine doesn't work on people and so there's quite a lot of doctors now coming out talking about nutrition and <clears throat> different herbs and things like that which we can use to get our health back on track and these are things i never had a clue about many years ago you know to me if you got cancer you took chemotherapy and radiotherapy and had an operation and then you died or you didn't. But now even doctors are coming out and saying there's other things you can do. You know, intravenous vitamin C, sour sop, there's uh, frequencies you can use, um, like the zappers and things like this. And the biggest one is to remove um, the food that feeds cancer, which is dairy and sugar more than anything 
they never used to say this before. So the, the fact that some doctors are now coming out and talking openly about this and giving us real information that's giving us back our health means that we are falling away from mainstream medicine. And more and more people are listening to the holistic approach. And so there is an awakening going on and we need to remember that we're not on our own. We're all at different levels of knowledge and enlightenment. And I consider myself to be quite, not in the early stages, but not far from there. There's a lot of people out there who are a lot more wise than me. They've been onto this for a lot longer than I have. And they are really putting themselves out there. But what I find interesting is we are living in the times that where many people are afraid and yet I've never been this unafraid in my life and it's because of this during the um, three-year period which I can't say because I've already got a ban on this channel for using the word but during that episode that everybody knows about <laughs> where some people were vaccinated and put masks on that episode <clears throat> I at first I freaked out and I was so upset because I thought oh I lost my job straight away and my income and I did not get furloughed and 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 I was beside myself and I thought I'm I've got nothing left you've took everything away from me and I was so angry and then I had to deal with the repercussions of not putting a mask on and the social outcasting and I went through a, a phase of feeling really depressed about it and really down. And then I realised something happened, which was really, really interesting. And that is during that time on Facebook, I, I ended up with 4,000 friends from around the world who were all like me. And up until that point, I never knew anybody like me apart from a couple of personal people in my life and I thought wow there's more of me than I thought so during this time I met my tribe and so did they and that empowered us but what is more interesting is I got so many downloads at that time because I also scry and I read the clouds and trees and things like this and they tell a story and I remember just before all this happened, getting this download that we were all going to be opened up to our gifts and everybody has them and and they're just being lying dormant because we, when when life sees it and you're just getting on with it and you've got, you've got a busy schedule and a family to look after, you do not have time to introspect. You, you've got so little time that when you do have time, all you want to do is put on a film and or read a book and just chill out. But during this time, so many people became aware that they had lament and gifts that they didn't even know they had. Or they'd been put on the back burner for so long and suddenly it's like, well, I've got time to do them now. And so there was a big awakening during this time and that really spurred me on and it made me feel really good and and it was great because <clears throat> the people that I've met were people who were actually helping me evolve to an higher level rather than just being equals even you meet different people you meet the ones who are thirsty for knowledge like the ones who had the awakenings like what's going on something doesn't feel right so we were able to guide them people we were able to talk to people on our level, but we were also able to learn from people who were more advanced than us. And so this has been a, an, an absolutely great time. And ever since then, I haven't had the fear because I know something's going to happen. And I've always said my entire life that there is a war raging behind the scenes. And I've always said this and I've always felt it. A spiritual war but down down in my heart I know that we have already won I already know this 
there's no such thing as death. If, if you're on a journey and your intentions are to go to the end of this road of what we'd call enlightenment and you're on your way there and somebody takes your life, that doesn't stop you going there. It's the fact that you were moving in that direction and your intentions were taking you there. So you're still going to get there. And so what, what are we scared of? And it's okay to have blips because I, I have them sometimes. Everyone does. And you can have moments where you think, what is the point of this? It's just awful. I, I feel like we're never going to win. And is this hopeless? But the answer is no, it's not hopeless at all. And we are winning and we already have won. <laughs> and it's just the process that we're going through. And I thought, you, you know, a few years ago, I wouldn't have dreamed of doing this. I would not have dreamed of coming on YouTube and talking like this. I do have another channel, but it's literally me talking about what I'm doing. And I haven't put a video on for months because life has been mostly doing this and that's not linked to my other channel. And the viewers on there would not like this one. I know they wouldn't. They'd be thinking, oh, no, oh, I thought you, I thought you was all right, you, and I think now I think you're nuts. So I'd probably lose my subscribers on that channel if they knew about this one. <laughs> so I don't, I just keep them separate. But there's no way I would have thought I, I would be able to do this. So everybody here who's watching this, I bet you have had some kind of a download in these last three years. I bet some of your senses have become more heightened or you've become more aware of things more questioning i i bet you have and that that's why i find it exciting and that is why i'm not bothered anymore i'm not going to cry about what i can't change all i can do is live my best life and i spent so much of my life not doing that because i was in fear or i was stressed and i was trying to cope with with life and, and my responsibilities but now i'm on my own and i've got my time to be whoever i want to be and this is a time of celebration and i'm learning a skill here that i can write a books about and that to me is a massive achievement and it's really it's cool i love it so i'm gonna go but thank you for listening um please subscribe and come back for more if you've got any questions i will channel them and tell you what they say i try always to be honest um the only things that i take out of the channeling are when it starts to get personal to me because that just takes it off track and then i get oh, no so I've got to be mindful that some things would have to be taken out if they were too controversial or anything like that. But hopefully I can build this channel up and it'd be nice to speak to other channelers and see if we've got things we can learn from each other or we've got things in common. What I have found interesting is that on all the channelers, we've all got our own team behind us. So we all channel different spirits. So everybody, including you, has got your own team behind you. And they're all personal to you. So they've all got their own names and their own functions. And if if you're not scared to contact them and you learn how to do it, then they're there to guide you. And they've got their own language. Um, when I listen to other channelers, they, the language of, that they get through, and when I say language, I mean... Uh, nuances and phrases that most people wouldn't understand what you, you're talking about but mine are very very um vague sometimes but i but only i know what they mean but you wouldn't so they're very personal to me so if anybody wants to have a go at learning how to do this um i can guide you and in, into what i've done and how i've done it and i think i'll do some videos on that as well in the future but it'd be nice to have a community on here of 
open-minded people where you can have intelligent debates and learn from each other hopefully and it's all part of the journey so i will go now and thank you for listening <laughs>